Hey everybody out there, this is Josh Rhodes again here taking over the Trigger King YouTube channel. Just wanted to let you know that this video is going to be focused on my most requested truck. I always get questions, comments, wanting to know what's in this thing, how do I build it, where can I buy it. It's obviously not a production vehicle. This is a lot of work that goes into these things and I'm about to go into very, very detailed description of this truck. I just want to say real quick before we get into this that uh, I know we're all going through a rough time right now and I really do hope that this video can bring a sense of normalcy out there for you and maybe make you forget about what's going on for a little while. With that said, let's hop inside this uh, Gravedigger truck. I want to take a quick second here to shout out three sponsors. JB Scale Graphics for all your graphics needs. Uh, John has some phenomenal stuff over there on his website jbscalegraphics.com you can get just about anything that you're looking for uh, he has the licensing to produce Bigfoot decals he has licensing to produce Overkill Evolution as well as Obsessed he does flags every flag you see on my trucks whether it's the Jolly Roger flag on the back of my Gravediggers or the Bad Company flag as well as the Ford flags that are sitting on the back of my Wildfoot John has done those for me and he has done a phenomenal job with them we zoom back out here and we'll zoom back in real quick to the top two decals right up here next to the moon. First being J Concepts. They provide this awesome rubber that you see on all of my trucks. Comes in multiple compounds. These are Renegades. I also run Gold Gears as well as Firestorms from them as well as their Tribute Rims. Every tire fits the Tribute Rims perfectly and they are just phenomenal as far as grip goes. I run these things on slick concrete, dirt, grass, you name it, they will hook up on it. And they come, like I said, in multiple compounds. Blue for the dirt, gold for just about everything else. ACRC, you can see it. I'll zoom in right here. It's on the name of the, it's on the chassis. <laughs> Bob C. Chandler makes these things and they are phenomenal chassis. I put them through a lot of abuse. This is a brand new chassis and that'll be the next thing I get into right now. Brand new for 2020 here, we have my ACRC chassis provided by ACRC, of course. And on this chassis that's keeping it up, you can see two shocks right there, four all the way around. These are power stroke shocks. They are the rear for the Traxxas Slash. The springs that I run on these are the yellow lower and the green upper. They provide pretty good dampening and give the truck a little bit of bounce, which is what I like as far as jumping and landing this thing lands perfect and as you can see it does not bottom out at all you can fit your finger underneath there that's about what you want inside we have the J Concepts bump stops that provide the stoppage of that travel because if I did not have those this truck would bottom out and it would cause damage to the chassis which is what happened to the previous Gravedigger chassis before I put these bump stops on that truck bottomed out all the time now uh, that after two seasons of abuse anyway that chassis had to be retired, it was bent, uh, it was not performing up to snuff anymore, and I want my Gravedigger to be at the top of its game all the time. So I pur purchased this chassis, and with it I purchased these bump stops as well for the shocks. Again, here on the front we have a Tekken T300 servo powering the Sutton Motorsports behind the axle steering that I have. Uh, on a Tamiya Clodbuster modified truck like this is, uh, behind the axle steering on a Pro Mod vehicle is a must. You must have it. And by behind the axle, I mean there's a bar back there that hooks to your knuckle. And it turns behind the axle, as you can see right there. I'll pick the truck up in just a second and give you an example of the behind the axle from underneath. So you can actually see it a little bit better. But I wanted to give you this view because on the front of this, I do have a little guy that uh, has become a mainstay on the front of my Pro Mod trucks. And I actually call him Scully. And I just wanted to have him say hi to you really quick. Inside the chassis, we have two Grotner 120R ESCs as well as two Grotner 5.5T motors. These are some really torquey motors and these systems really provide a turbo kick with these things. And this truck flies, does backflips through the air. It's very well known what this truck can do in Trigger King. All because of these systems right here. Here's an example of how the behind the axle steering works. The bar back there is hooked to a servo arm, which is in turn hooked to the horn that comes off of the servo. And it actually throws the steering of the vehicle. Most trucks you will see, uh, whether they're hobby grade trucks or not, 
mainly have a servo sitting either in the center of the vehicle or aimed down under the vehicle for the steering or they're sitting directly on the axle like the AR60s you see on the SMT10. With a Tamiya Cloudbuster, a modified version, this is the absolute best way you can have any type of steering. While we look here underneath the chassis, I'll point out a few things for you. Right here we have a rod, rod end by RPM that is connected into a Sutton Motorsports lower four link. This lower four link uh, machined by Travis Sutton is where I mount my shocks as well as my sway bar. This is the sway bar, this is the shock right here. These connect to the chassis up here as well as directly to the axle tube down here. And down here I actually have a CPE aluminum uh, little mount right here that actually is a support for this plastic Tamiya axle tube. A lot of people ask me all the time, Josh, why do you not run the metal axle tubes? Very simple. When these break, they break. They're replaceable. When you replace them, they're straight. You bend a aluminum axle tube, it's bent. You've wasted all that money on that bent tube. And yes, you can buy another one, but still, they're, they're quite a bit of money a pop for an aluminum one. I would rather just go ahead and get these and replace these any day of the week. Uh, on here you can see this is uh, what they call a quick change gear set, also from CPE. Uh, I have three of these bolts. The fourth, I still have to open the axle up to get to the fourth bolt down in here, which actually holds this uh, behind the axle servo mount on. The actual upper link, uh, it's kind of the wrong direction here, but I'll go ahead and point it out. This is also Sutton Motorsports. It is a three points of connection link that connects to the top of your gear case, right into the front, as well as the bottom. It is a very sturdy mount. I really do enjoy the way Travis builds these. They are made of solid Durlin. I get a lot of questions about the bracing that I use as far as my axles go as well. These braces are an older style brace from ZRP, which is no longer in business. Uh, the mounts and braces are no longer produced anymore uh, as of a few weeks ago, unfortunately. Uh, there needs to be a company that steps up, though, if we're going to keep making these Tamiya Cloudbusters that actually does produce these, these uh, braces like this because they are very much a necessity for running pro-modified vehicles. Now, inside this tube right here is the axle shaft. Now, a stock axle shaft from a Tamiya Cloudbuster looks a little something like this right here. Uh, it's just a pin that comes through the shaft that is actually got two little uh, ears on the end of it, I guess you can call them, and they connect into this piece right here for your outer axle. They're not a very sturdy setup. Uh, for a pro mod anyway, I go through those I uh, went through those a lot and my solution to that was picking up these little things right here These are called CVDs. These are made by Thunder Tech Racing They are again a very hard part to find but you can already see when I first put the stock version of this in there How much throw that they really had as far as the axle look at how much throw In these CVDs there they just articulate so well they are strong. I have never broken a set of these, and uh, they're just a very good upgrade to get as far as the Tamiya Cloudbuster goes. That is, if you can find them. Again, they are a very hard piece of machinery to find, and they can be pretty expensive because of the rarity that they, they are. Now we talked about the front axle here. This is where the CVD comes into play. As you can see, it turns the front tires. Also, I'll point out really quick here, inside here we have the stock Tamiya knuckle that is shaved down via a Dremel so you can get more throw, uh, steering throw, out of the truck. And as you can see, if I can get the camera up here, you can see just how much extra added throw that you get. On the top here of this is also shaved. There is a little ear right here that needs to be shaved off. Shave that and that off and you get as much throw as you absolutely need out of these vehicles and you can pick your steering up quite a bit. Now, for the rear, uh, the axle shaft back here is also replaced in my truck. It is not a stock Tamiya axle. It is a ThunderTech CVD, str or excuse me, ThunderTech straight axle that is on the back of this. It actually almost virtually eliminates the need for a rear steer lockout in the vehicle, but just for added security, I do have a lockout back here from Sutton Motorsports. 
Right here we have two different hexes, and I want to point out the difference in each of these. This hex right here is from ThunderTech Racing. This comes stock with your CVD or your straight axle. It is a plastic piece, and uh, I'll be honest with you, it's not very durable. One of our more popular Trigger King videos is the very first freestyle that I had with the TTR axles inside my Gravedigger, and it did not go very well, unfortunately. It was a Vinyl Images Invitational event. The truck just stops moving, and that's because every single outer piece right here around the hex was stripped on all four corners of the truck. I was pushing so much power that it just said, nope, I'm done. So that brings me to the upgrade here. This upgrade was brought to me by uh, Hesse Machine. And these are aluminum, obviously, and they work very well. They work the exact same way as the stock version of this. These right here are just a lot a lot better they're a, the best upgrade you could possibly get as far as the cvd and straight axle combo and like i said mike hesse does phenomenal work uh, i recommend checking him out if you have a set of those ttr axles and you keep stripping these out or you have one of these that's stripped i've talked about the flag before but we'll go ahead and touch on it again here this pole is actually made up of two thick zip ties basically bought straight from walmart that i have shoe gooed together and then drilled a hole through in the very bottom of drill the hole through you slide your nut through this side of the gear case all the way through here add a washer on the outside bolt it on there and you have one extremely durable flagpole it will not it will not really give you hardly an inch i mean it gives actually i should take that back it gives just enough to where you don't break your flagpoles and there's been plenty of instances where somebody has broken a flagpole in trigger king competition you just go ahead and look it up i mean this is the strongest that you can possibly get there is another way to do this though uh on some other bodies as far as non non gravedigger bodies anyway and i'll point that out to you right now with the magic of editing this of course is my bad company truck this truck is built the exact same way as my gravedigger truck as it is strong as can be on the back here though the flag is mounted a little bit differently and i want to point this out this is a jb scale graphics flag mount that is on the back of this truck connected to an antenna tube that goes straight up into the flag you can see here which is bad company uh, john again makes wonderful flags and this flag mount that he's provided that is 3d printed is very simple to install all you do is drill a hole into your body just a small hole you can fit a bolt through bolt it straight on and voila you've got a perfect flag mount for your truck one of the biggest questions that i get all the time is hey where did you get the headlights where did you get the headlights i'll point it out to you superbrightleds.com these are 12 millimeter bolt leds that fit directly into the headlight all you have to do is drill uh, these headlights or drill the headlight of your body out to the size of this thing. If you over drill it, these will slide through. So kind of measure as you go basically and make sure you've got the correct uh, drill bit in there. So when you put these in, they just slide right in like these things do and they will not go anywhere. It's actually connected to the back side of this via a bolt. And there you see it, ladies and gentlemen, the bolt that holds on the bolt LED for the Gravedigger headlight. And here you have it, everybody, an in-depth look inside my Gravedigger Pro Mod truck. I really hope you all enjoyed it. Again, if you want to follow my RC exploits and adventures, follow me on Facebook, Josh Rhodes RC Racing. Also, check me out on Instagram, Josh Dig Rhodes. Again, hope you all really enjoyed it. I hope this took away uh, a little bit of time from you so you can at least try and focus on some normalcy out there in the world right now. Also, guys, do keep checking back here because you just never know what might be coming next from me here on Trigger King Tech.